I left off last time with uh, two footings being poured. We since uh, started building the block walls for my tool shed. Check out the progress of my boys. Here you can see back in the corner the block wall progress on the tool shed. This is where I'll keep my ladders and wheelbarrow, rakes, and shovels, implements of destruction or what have you. Typically my uh, my guys don't like to go more than six blocks high uh, in a day because of the compression weight. So they start working on a footing for the man cave or my office, studio, whatever you want to call it. Um, so there's the tool shed and here's the footing for for the next room. Here we're back out front working on the gate, but I'm starting to realize why when these guys work out front, why things start going a little slow. There's just way too many distractions. Here we got another vertical column fit with rebar, and because the gate's going up, uh, now it's time to bust, bust out the wall so we can gain access. Now with access, it'll just make it that much more convenient. Here, another 200 hollow blocks have showed up. And having no rain for a while is good for construction, but it's, uh, it's hard on the workers because it's been so hot. So I put this tarp up uh, so they can mix concrete under the... Uh, under a roof. And after knocking the wall down, we had a bunch of uh, broken pieces of concrete that I decided just to go ahead and use it as uh, leveling fill in here. So we're just crushing it all up and packing it into the soil. All done with the stump of a coconut tree. Now that we got the wall open, the uh, gizmo and gadget have noticed that something's different. So they're, they're here for inspection. Here are the 200 newly minted hollow block that just arrived along with two cubic meters of gravel. And now work is beginning on the, uh, the studio. Here's a side view of the tool shed um, and the one inch topping coat he's putting on the, uh, the side of the wall. This is the front wall of the studio and you can see my window starting to take shape. There's my window. Uh, the way they do headers here is different than the way we do them in the U.S. In the U.S. we'd put a, a sturdy lintel or steel, steel header there or in wood construction usually a double 2 by 6 But here they just put rebar encased in concrete to let that set. The blocks on top of that will be supported by the rebar tied in the, in the lintel and the, the posts that will go on top will hook, the rebar will hook over this post as you see here. So the beam on the top will actually create the header, if that makes any sense to anybody. The beam will be the header. Here I've got to get the drain, the floor drain attached to the plumbing and it will be ready to pour concrete. Um, Maybe today or tomorrow. This will be my window view from my desk or command central. I'll have a great view of the mountain in front of me and maybe some motion on the left. We'll see. Now we're laying out the string lines for the, uh, the comfort room. And getting with steel rebar ready for the footings for that foundation. We'll fill up these footing, these forms here with concrete, and then just move on to the comfort room uh, where you see my guy sitting here. I have personally taken on the role as the site plumber. Um, I'm in charge of 
plumbing, plumbing, plumbing. I've laid everything out, uh, glued all the joints, and um, make sure that we've got enough fall from all all drain points. Um, so I'm taking care of the plumbing. They can dig the ditches. I'll lay the plumbing. Just want to make sure it's done right. This is a four-inch line. We'll be coming out of the out of the CR, and I'll put an elbow a 45 on that and direct it into the septic tank um, right about here. These are just going to be floor drains in, in the CR and another uh, drain coming from the shop in the yard. And this is how concrete's done here in the Philippines. It's lifted on the ground manually and poured manually. This job's pretty small right now. Um, so I don't need two guys, but once I get to the ceiling, which is going to be all concrete, we'll need to increase to about five laborers. And then work continues on the wall. Yesterday I had a one of my subscribers ask me a question about the hollow blocks that we use here in the Philippines, or that the Filipinos use for construction. He wanted to know how come the hollow blocks weren't laid like they are in the United States, or in the West, for all that matters. People always say, wow, they don't know how to lay a block here in the Philippines, it's so ugly. Well, initially it is. Um, you question whether these guys are masons, but the only masonry skill that they really need to possess is to make sure the wall is filled with concrete and rebar, and make sure it is true and plumb. The finishing, uh, work on the wall is what really matters. Uh, it, it boils down to methodology. Today I'm going to give you a lesson in Philippine hollow block. I'm going to show you how strong they are. Pretty strong. Now i got to wash my hair. The concrete hollow blocks here are not really concrete. They're mostly just uh, sand with a little bit of Portland. These blocks are designed as forms to hold concrete. That's why when they when they lay them, it looks really ugly as hell. Uh, and it doesn't matter if they're crooked, uh, as long as the wall is true and plumb, um, that really is the only thing that matters. These blocks are filled with uh, a, uh, a real wet slurry of, uh, of Portland and sand. And the reason it's so wet is because these things are so porous that once you put the concrete, the wet concrete mix inside, it absorbs into the concrete block. So the Portland and the water gets absorbed by the block almost like a sponge. And instead of this, it becomes very solid. Uh, rebar is also run down through the top of the block and the concrete. So each, essentially each hole here becomes a column. And one that has rebar on it is pretty strong. Then on the outside of the block, when they finish the block, they put about a one inch topping coat. To see here, um, when they put the topping coat on, it's, it's about a one inch thickness. It's hard to see from here, but it's, it's one inch. Um, and they use guidelines. As you see here in this depiction, uh, to keep the, the thickness consistent from top to bottom. It's even hard to pound a nail through, but they'll put a one inch on this side and a one inch on this side. And on the interior, they put a skim coat. Uh, in addition to the one inch topping coat. So what you got is a very strong wall. This wall here is solid. Even though it started out with a four inch block, it's now six inches minimum with all the concrete that they put on the outside and the inside. Uh, it makes for a very sturdy, sturdy wall. Um, just as sturdy as an eight inch hollow block in the United States, in my opinion. Um, and that's evidenced by um, a lot of the structures that are, have gone through many earth tremors and earthquakes are still standing. There might be cracks in them, but they're still standing. All right, here we've got the CR started. We've got the six uh, block height uh, limit for the day done. And uh, they'll take a break and come back tomorrow. And in the meantime...
Here you see a worker working on the top half of the corner column. And also you see the headers for the window and a door are in place. And the CR, uh, the bottom half of the wall is laid, just ready for the top half. I might have mentioned earlier that we we're almost 30 blocks short. Um, so I just went out and bought 30 blocks. And it's always better to not have a bunch of leftovers when the job is done. Here the top coat is uh, done completely on the tool room. And I won't have them do no skim coat on these walls because it's just a tool room. And here it looks like Gizmo's finally made his way out into the yard and uh, he's got himself a, perched in a good, good position to check out what's going on. And now it's time to mix concrete for the uh, tool room floor. Uh, rebar is in. And now we're going to run some level lines to the drain to make sure that the floor falls evenly from all directions to the center. Here you can see the CR is completely blocked up and now all we have to do is run the uh, beams across the top of the walls. I mentioned earlier about the uh, string lines that will go from the corners to the center of the drain. This just ensures uh, that we have a, a good fall to the center of the floor. Here we've got two new footings uh, dug, uh, getting ready for one and a half of the garage wall, and another 200 bags of sand has arrived. Uh, the dirt we took out of the footings we're using to level the floor, and once again manually tamp it down with a coconut tree. Here the guys are back on top of the wall, constructing the rebar beams uh, that will traverse the top of every wall and will help uh, hold our concrete ceiling in place. And if you can't go to work and clown around just at least a little bit, what's the point of going to work at all, right? Here you can see I had the guys extend the beams about almost three feet out over the wall for an overhang. The two main reasons for the overhang is one for aesthetics and the other is to keep the pathway dry in case of rain. And three, it gives us uh, additional square footage on top of the structure that we can uh, use as an elevated patio for relaxation and a view of the ocean later on. All our steel is fabricated on site, cut, bent, and tied together with tie wire. Well, that's all I got for now, so uh, we'll keep working and come on back for part three. Thanks for watching. Retired in summer. One day at a time.